Zoom is great, but it also sucks in a lot of ways. But they're working to make it suck less. They're always putting out updates that I think a lot of teachers aren't generally aware of. So here are three that you may not know about, plus one that's probably not an update, but maybe a cool thing you didn't know how to do. That'll be the bonus tip. Hi there, ladies and gents. My name is Tom Gibson, and if you're new here, my channel is all about helping fellow middle school STEM teachers design an engaging classroom experience for their students and a fulfilling teaching experience for themselves. And that is sometimes hard to do with Zoom, so let's take a look at some of the updates that will make your Zoom experience a little bit better. Before we start, you need to know how to update Zoom. There's a few ways to update, but I find the easiest way is if you go to that Zoom desktop app and then click on your little face in the top right, click check for updates, and then install any updates that are available. So the first update you may not know about is that students can now move themselves to whatever breakout room they'd like to go to, and then they can also move between them if they want to. That solves a lot of problems of you trying to figure out where everyone needs to go and putting them and, oh, can you put me in this room and that room? Now, the students have to have the updated version themselves in order to be able to do this. I generally don't spend a lot of class time to get students to update their Zoom client because it'll usually just turn into, okay, click here. Oh, I have a Chromebook, so it looks different. I have a Chromebook too, it's on this menu. And now I have to put in a password and I gotta go get it from my parents and they're in a meeting and I can't disturb them. And I'm like, whatever. If you have the update, then you can go ahead and move yourself to a room. Otherwise, I'll still have to move the students that don't have the update to specific breakout rooms. And I'll talk about how I kind of speed that process up too. So to do this, when you're making your breakout rooms, you'll go ahead and decide how many rooms you want. If it's just a day where it's like, okay, you can go work independently in a breakout room or if you'd like to work with someone else, you can join them in a breakout room. I'll make enough breakout rooms for everyone to have their own room if they would like, and then they can just move to different rooms as they see fit. In this case, what I'll usually do with students who don't have the update is I will tell them to rename themselves. They can right click on their own little box and then click on rename, and then they can put a one in front of their name if they would like to be in a room by themselves, or a two in front of their name if they'd like to be in a room with other people. And so that way when I have to assign people, it's actually in order, all of my ones are together, so I can go like, okay, assign, 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 assign really quickly, and then my twos are also bunched together in my little list and then I can decide which rooms to put them into together or I may even say like if you want to be in a room with someone specific just put that in the chat and then I will try to honor that if I have a really big class I'm probably not going to do that I'll just randomly assign people or put them with people that I know that I think they'll probably be able to work with well another option you can do is create a different room depending on what a student is working on so it's like if you're still working on the notes you are in room number one if you're working on the assignment you're in room number two if you're preparing for the test you're in room number three and so they may or may not be working together Together, but at least all of the students that are in different spots, I can go see and check in. And then I'll also create maybe five other rooms called check-in rooms that I can pull people out of and put in that check-in room. Or if a student wants to call me over, they can move themselves to a check-in room and then call me over and I can answer their question without disturbing the other students in the breakout room. And on the student side of things, after you've opened all the rooms, then the students will see a little option on the bottom that says breakout rooms and they can see all the rooms and then click which one they'd like to join. The second update that you may not know about is that you can choose to spotlight yourself and multiple other people at the same time. So what that basically means is if I spotlight myself for everybody, it will automatically go into speaker mode and I will be taking up most of the screen. Welcome to my TED talk. Um. <laughs> Anytime that you can make Zoom do what you want it to do without telling the students, okay, go up to view and everyone, you need to switch me over to speaker view. And okay, you're not going to be able to see this if it's not in speaker view. The fact that I can just spotlight myself and then it puts it in speaker view and it keeps me spotlighted even if someone else is talking. So it's a little bit different than speaker view. It's super helpful. And then if I want to take the spotlight off of myself, I just have to hit the remove spotlight pin and it will then keep it in speaker view for the students. They'll have to manually go back and to change it to gallery view if they want to do that. But now it's not going to just keep me in the speaker view. If someone else is talking, it will put them front and center. You get spotlight up to nine people and this can be really helpful if you have students doing a presentation together, maybe two or three students together, and then you can go ahead and spotlight all three. So that way, even if someone else is talking, they don't take up the full screen, but those three students that you have spotlit, spotlight lighted are the ones that are kind of front and center. The third update you may not know about is virtual seating charts. The biggest problem this solves is sometimes you're looking and you're maybe doing some of your attendance and then if someone pops in the order changes and then if someone leaves the order changes again. I don't even know why that's a thing because it's not like it's in alphabetical order or anything anyways. So you can click and drag the different boxes around the screen and arrange them however you like. The nice thing is once you do this 
even though people pop in and out, it's not gonna change the order of the students on the screen. I think maybe it'll throw them on the end if they get added. Now, from what I saw, Zoom is saying there will be a way in the future that you can save this preset arrangement. So I don't know if I would do it every class period and drag everyone to the right spot. But the good thing is once you drag one square, you don't even need to drag anymore. It just keeps the whole thing locked now. So whether students are coming in and out, doesn't change the order. And the really nice thing is there there is a feature that you can have the students see the exact same arrangement that you see. And that option is going to be available at the top when you click on view, and then you can just say, okay, everyone sees the same layout. Now, I want you to tell me what y'all see right now. Oh, Holden's first instead oh, of me. Whoa. Uh, you, I'm Holden. You mean well, Jacob? Yes, I used to be. That's really helpful if you're doing something that's like, okay, let's go around the room and then you don't have to specifically call on this person, that person, but you may still have to do that because they're probably not paying attention, but at least they'll know like, okay, I'm going to be coming up next. The bonus tip that I don't think is an update, but I didn't find out until somewhat recently is that you can change the amount of time it takes to close the breakout rooms. The default is set to 60 seconds, which really sucks if you're like, I just need to call everyone back to the main room make one quick announcement and then send them back because you can hit close all rooms, but then the 60 second timer starts going down. Some students will come back right away, but your other students that are either so engrossed in what they're doing and discussing, they don't notice it, or they're playing Minecraft and they don't have Zoom up, won't end up coming back to the main room until it officially closes it after those 60 seconds. That's a long time to just kind of waste waiting for people to come back. You can change that timer to be as short as 10 seconds. The way you do it is when you're setting up your breakout rooms, you click on the breakout rooms, you kind of start setting it up on whether it's going to be you're automatically going to move them or let them move themselves and then you click create rooms before you open the rooms because you can't change this setting once you've opened the rooms before you open the rooms click on the little options button that is really hidden and not super obvious down in the bottom left and you will see the countdown after closing breakout rooms i keep mine at 15 seconds i think that's fine you can go as low as 10 though and it'll just save a bunch of time breakout rooms are hard to structure to make it an engaging and meaningful and collaborative space for your students students and not just a place where cameras and mics are off and students are just sitting there. I have another video that you can click on right there that is all about how you can structure your breakout rooms to maximize the potential that students are going to be working and engaged in the work that they're doing in the breakout room. That is all everyone. Thank you so much for helping me make this video and coming up with alias names and I'll send it to all of you when I am done with it, okay? Let's go. <laughs>